Hello friends. I wanted to take a few minutes actually to discuss the lids on the no pour jars. So if you're creating these amazing, easy Petri dishes called no pour jars, simply agar in a jar instead of a Petri dish, We've been having this conversation about flipping the lids, and I want to go into detail. It is always our intention here at Mycology Exploration to simply share what works for us. We all live in different parts of the world here on planet Earth. The, <laughs> the weather, the humidity, the moisture is different where all of us live, and it depends on also the temperature that you have the settings, the environment of where you're actually growing the mushrooms. And so again, weather, moisture, humidity, it all matters when you're talking about fungus, mycology, and growing mushrooms. And it doesn't matter if these are gourmet mushrooms or medicinal mushrooms. We have used these techniques for all types of mushrooms. And Agar jars are simple and they're easy when you work through all of the details for yourself. And so I just wanted to chat about the lids. And again, we love making these short topical videos because all the little things add up in mycology. It really does, like sterilization, <laughs> keeping things clean, it really matters. And so the lids being flipped is a great conversation when it comes to moisture in your dish, in your no-pour jar. And again, we like to recommend that you get these clear jars, see these clear, versus the quilted jars. So this would be a quilted jar, and it's a little bit more difficult to see within the jar, but it's okay because what we do is flip the jars upside down. So you can see what's happening inside, which is perfect. So this is an incredibly light MEA agar recipe that the husband is experimenting with. And that's what we're doing in these colder months in the winter is experimenting. And we're sharing this with you. And so I'm gonna have another video about this very light MEA process with cloning mushrooms. But for this video, let's keep talking about the flipped lid. So when you're creating an actual Petri dish, if we had the very helpful and useful Petri dishes that we used to use at the beginning, you may have seen it in our beginning agar videos. When you do the transfer or the cloning on a regular old Petri dish, you don't have the ring to seal the Petri dish. So you use parafilm. It's tape for Petri dishes. And so what happens is after you do your clone or your transfer with the Petri dish, you would put parafilm around it, which would seal the dish. However, before you do your cloning or transferring, it's actually your dish is more like this with a flipped lid. So this jar does not have a flipped lid. It's airtight, it's sealed with the ring the way it's designed. So again, on the right is the regular unflipped lid. On the left here is the flipped lid. So before you pressure cook, because with the no pour jar technique, you pressure cook after you pour your jars. I don't know why it's called no pour jars because you do pour it into the jar. So you create your agar mix and then you pour it into all your jars. And we flip the lids to create this vented situation, a little bit of venting so that there's this air exchange where the moisture can vent out. 
When you do flip the lid, you're going to need to put foil over the top and around the sides so that you don't have any problems with this in the pressure cooker. If you do not flip your lids, you don't need foil around the top because you have a seal. So again, when you flip the lids, you have, it's not sealed. There's a venting. So it's, it's similar to a Petri dish without the parafilm. And then this one with the lid the correct way, it's not flipped. It has the seal, so it's comparable to a Petri dish with a parafilm when you put parafilm around it. So we have found, we actually did an experiment, some of you may have remembered, that we had, I believe it was 24 no-pour jars, and 12 of them we did not flip the, lid, the lids, and 12 of them we flipped the lids. And it was drastic difference. <laughs> The ones that we flipped the lids like this with the ventilation had way less moisture. Way less moisture, which was amazing. And so we used to flip them at the beginning and then kind of forgot and stopped flipping them. And then somebody asked us here in the comments. And so we went back and did that experiment. And I'm so glad somebody brought it to our attention because we have way less moisture when we flip these lids compared to when we don't flip the lids. And so I wanted to show you all this moisture, but you can see how it's rolled down into the top, the lid. But what's fascinating is where you're seeing all this moisture is actually on the top of the lid, right? <laughs> because those are flipped. So you're seeing this part, the top of the lid, that has all that moisture. And here's what's really handy, is that all that moisture in there has been through the pressure cooker, so it's sterilized. So what I simply do, and we just pulled these out yesterday out of the pressure cooker, and what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get the still air box out because we're not gonna transfer for another 24 to 48 hours. And we really do like for our no pour jars to sit for a few days just to make sure there's no contamination before we clone or transfer. And so what I'm gonna do is pull out my still air box. I'm going to sanitize and sterilize everything and I put down very wet paper towels in the bottom of the still air box. I actually have a video showing you this. And then I open these jars immediately, flipping them upside down. So I open them and then this inside part, which is now gonna go inside, right? To look like this, gets flipped down on the 91% soaked paper towel, and then the jar gets turned over so any extra moisture can roll out onto the paper towel. And then I actually, I don't worry about that condensation that actually is on the top of the lid because I can clean that after, and that water is sterilized in there. So I'm not concerned about that. And so I will, pull out the still, still air box, and I will flip all of these lids the correct way and then store them for the next day or two in a dry, dark cabinet before we do any transfers or clones. And when I store them, I still store them upside down. And what I do not do is I do not clean the sides of the jars ever. So that moisture on the side, a lot of times it will come out when I turn it upside down inside the still air box, but I do not wipe that. I do clean the side with 91% alcohol again before I flip it the correct way. Because as you can see, when you flip it, this side, which is gonna go towards your dish, your agar, is gonna be inside now. And everything's sterilized from the pressure cooking until you open it. 
and now you've opened yourself for possible contamination, and it's okay, you're gonna sterilize your still air box. It's, you're gonna have a clean environment within your still air box. However, I'm not going to open myself for further contamination by wiping out the sides of the jar. We actually do not have a problem with this extra moisture. We actually do not experience much contamination at all, if any. The only time we've really experienced contamination is heating. So if we're trying to heat the space or heat something, so that's why we recommend not even attempting to grow if you're heating, heating your area. But we've done some warm up videos in the cabinet and it's been okay, but we did have some contamination. Again, there's something about adding the heat element that you can possibly cook something, but also contamination can grow. So I just wanted to have this conversation for those of you that were really into the lid and maybe even thought that it was a little confusing what I was saying in some of the shorts about when I was flipping the lids. And so I just wanted to give you guys some thought experiment and some things to chew on for yourself. And maybe even thinking through the steps before you go opening the tops <laughs> and introducing contamination. And I just always recommend anything that you do, just do it inside your still air box and wear gloves. And I use 91% alcohol. Well, I can't think of anything else to share with you guys. And if you're new, we started with Petri dishes and parafilm, and it was so easy, and it's a good place to start, actually. And then when you're really into it and you love it and you really love mushrooms and growing mushrooms, then up your game, experiment. You can save yourself some, some money, and you can actually experiment more because you have an unlimited amount of jars that you can make and you don't feel like you're being wasteful with the throwaway Petri jars or Petri dishes. And to answer your question, we've never used glass Petri dishes. And when in doubt, pressure cook. So we pressure cook all these jars and lids in between all the uses. So the husband is the pressure cooker here they're his agar recipes. So he does all of the jars and the recipes and the pressure cooking. And so he pressure cooks everything in between. Everything. And so if there's anything I use, I'll just leave it out for him and he'll pop it in the pressure cooker. And he says, when in doubt, pressure cook it. <laughs> so we pressure cook and use 91% alcohol. And we always use clean purified water for everything. Much love, friends. I can't wait to hear from you in the comments.